Hello and welcome to Wolf Ridge Woodworking. Today we are going to be painting metal with a laser engraver. Stick around, let's go have some fun. All right, so you may be asking, how do you paint metal? Well, if you've ever seen anybody do any type of um, uh, forging or, or metal work like that, where you see them heat it up and they say, I wanna bring it to a straw color, uh, that's how they're, they're, they're judging the hardness of that metal based upon the, uh, the color it gives. So with the laser, what you're doing is you're basically heating it up to a certain temperature, very precise, uh, to bring out that certain color. You might wonder, well, how do you get the colors? How do you know that? Well, you do is this material test, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Let me see if you can see that here. So what it does is it produces a grid of colors and then you can use the speed over here on the side along with the power setting down here at the bottom to know what color you want. So then you plug that into Lightburn for the different areas of that image. Don't worry, I'm going to break all that down. So let's come over here to the computer and let me walk you through how you do that. Alrighty, so I've got Lightburn open. This is the, uh, the koi fish that we're going to make. But before we do that, we need to go in and we need to uh, do our material test. So you probably can't see it. I think that part is cut up, but it's going to be under laser tools, material test. And here's where you kind of set up that grid. I've already got this set up for steel. And you, once you have your settings in here, you can hit that save button so that you can always come back to it. And so what I got here is this is going to be uh, 10 rows. Yeah, 10 rows and eight columns. This, the rows are gonna be speed, the columns are, or the columns are going to be speed. And the, oh, I said that wrong. The rows are going to be the speed and the columns are gonna be the power. There we go. So I'm going to go in and I'm gonna start at 400. Now I will provide um, all of this uh, in the, the, I'll say the G code. You can download it for free off of my website, um, but it's going to be 400 is what we're gonna start with. 1200 millimeters per minute is what we're going to, uh, you know, that's the range for the speed. And the height of each grid is going to be four millimeters and the width is going to be four millimeters. So it just creates a four millimeter square. Power is from 10 to 80%. Then you need to come in and edit the material settings. And you can kind of ignore all of this. Make sure you're in fill mode because that's what you want to do to um, fill in the grids. Um, I have it at 2.5% over scanning. Uh, 0.1 line interval, and when you plug that in, it'll automatically put in this 254 inches per uh, inches, lines per inch, I should say. So that's that setting. And then if you go into the edit text, that is just the, um, the numbers on the side and the top, and it's going to be line. And for my 22 watt Creality Falcon 2, it uses 390% power. So this is going to be your baseline, depending on the wattage of the laser you have, you're going to have to play with these settings. But these are all the things that I did to get this to run. So then you put your piece of metal and you got to make sure it's the same thickness of metal that you're going to be using the, on the project because the different thicknesses will, you know, heat up and uh, cool down differently. So that's why your test has to be on the material you're using. So then you stick it on there, you hit frame to frame the laser around it, and then you hit go or start in this case, and it produces that grid for you. So once you have that, now what you have to do is uh, somehow I use Adobe Illustrator. And so this is the way that it, you know, supposed to look. And what I've done is, is I've broken the different colors out into different layers. Now it's a little bit of a learning curve. I think you might uh, be able to use some other software, but it definitely has to be a vector based graphic. It can't be a, uh, um, oh my gosh, pixelized uh, graphic, just because it, the CNC's laser machines, they all rely on a vector image. So it's just mathematics is to do it. But anyway, so once you have them on different layers and you come back into Lightburn, let's make this a little bit bigger. 
Then what you have are all of the different colors separated by the layers separated by a color. So you can see this here is the whole image and this is line. So that is the, going to be the back, you know, the outline of it. So there's no fill. It's just going to uh, draw out this image. Then what you have is the little thing on the top of the fish. Come over to uh, this. It's going to be this. So that's going to be an orange. So now what I need to do is go and look at material test card and find orange. And on this one, that orange piece is 400 millimeters per minute and a 30% power. And again, I got that from that material test. So then, you know, you just repeat that through all the other uh, colors. And what you have to do is come in and set those up for the different layers that you're going to have. So I'm just going to turn them all on so you can see them. And this is what, you know, the image in Lightburn is going to look like as I turn on these colors. Okay. So that's how you set this up. Again, you have to use that material test to know what the settings are for the particular colors you want. The one thing I can't show or teach you is how to use Adobe Illustrator. I have very basic knowledge, but I have enough <laughs> to be dangerous. So those are all the settings that I used. Again, it really depends on the wattage of the laser that you're going to use. So now let's go over and let's, uh, let's get this uh, process started. Well, that didn't go so well. Um, the colors didn't exactly come out. Let's see if I can. Colors didn't actually come out too well. And I don't know if it's hard to see on the camera, but it, it, it warped the metal. So I'm running it again. And uh, what I did was I took each color and ran it and running it separately and see if that will keep the metal cool. And then I wait like 30 minutes in between each one to let the metal cool down. Um, and we'll see here, this is the last one. Um, I didn't film it just because you already saw all of that. So it's the same thing, just turning off the layers and then running it and letting it cool. So stay tuned, let's see how this one comes out. Alrighty, so it just finished up. Let's uh, see how she did. Still bent it a little bit. But I think the colors came out a little bit better. I'm gonna take some uh, alcohol, some uh, isopropyl alcohol, wipe it off, uh, and then we'll come back and see how it looks. I said isopropyl, but I meant denatured. Just gonna put a little denatured alcohol on here. And let's just get it wiped down. I think that's good. All right, let's get the two and compare them. I still think that waiting, um, if I can get these to, to hold right, I still think waiting worked out um, because you can see here that blue is a lot richer in there. Um, the koi fish wasn't supposed to be colored in, it was just supposed to be natural. Um, but what didn't work out too well, is that supposed to be orange or like a light orange and it's a little bit more blue, but you kill, still can tell the difference between this dark blue and that. So need more experimentation, but 
all the information that I, I've given is going to help get you to this point, and then you just have to experiment it so you're not going to start from scratch. Alrighty, that's going to wrap things up today. I hope you picked up something that will help you out uh, if you want to do try this. If you have experiences and you find out there's better settings, drop a comment down below and help the rest of us out. Because the challenge that I found was there wasn't a lot of videos out there explaining the entire process for this. So hopefully this will help you out. This is a fantastic machine. It, again, it's the Creality Falcon 2. I'm so impressed with it. I can't wait to do more with it. I think the next thing that I really want to do is I want to make a, um, you know, engrave a tumbler. So that rotary attachment, I want to play with that. That's going to be a big challenge uh, of learning that. Uh, this one, you know, it was a big, big challenge, but I think I got it figured out. Still got to play with that to get the colors a little bit better. Maybe a smaller image. I don't know. Um, but as I do things, uh, make sure that you uh, check me out on Instagram. I'll post more pictures and information there as I learn things. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're interested, hit that subscribe button down there. And while you're there, drop a comment, uh, you know, let me know what you thought of this, if you, if you got anything out of it. And check up here for some more videos uh, from the channel. Click down there uh, if you want to subscribe. And until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.